Give me a beat. <laughs> I could be here with <laughs> Simon. Simon Paul Sutton, where do we start? I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, go on. Spiritualist. Activist, 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 and so on. We met uh, just a few weeks ago. I was giving a talk at um, the Holistic Media Group, and you were there. Um, I know there's a number of really interesting things that you're doing at the moment. Simon the Sofa Show, which was on a a while ago, Um, Conscious Media, which I hope you'll talk a little bit about, and a number of different kind of projects. Um, And I really wanted to talk to you a bit about you, your work, and what it is that you're doing, because I think that. You have some interesting things that I think that lots of people who watch these videos will find interesting mm. to hear. That's yeah. a bit cryptic. Yeah, but do you want that's to know? nice. That's always a challenge, isn't it? When somebody <laughs> asks you that on the spot, you're like, ah, oh, now I need to think about what's actually going to be beneficial. No, yeah, well, I mean, not at all. T- t- tell us a bit about your, 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 yourself and your story, your background. A little bit about the background. So, um, yeah, interesting. Where do we flow from? Okay, so. Good talk at the Holistic Media, by the way. Thank you, that's really kind. For those people who shame you can't see it on video if you weren't there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't see, you just have to take my word for it. Yeah. Um, okay, so story, I mean, it's been, a, you know, probably much like many people has got their unique story. Mine is very much, uh, you know, grew up on a council estate um, in terms of, you know, some people go, oh, council estate must be a bad life, you know, in terms of uh, how that is projected in the label of mm. council state, depravity, mm. you know, poverty or whatever. Um, and, you know, there, there is an essence of lack within that, that, that environment. Yeah. So, you know, but I had a very good life in terms of my perception, because that's all you know, mm. is that where you grow up is what you know. You know, I had a, a wonderful mum, still have a wonderful mum, who's, uh, um, you know, showered us with, uh, with the love that she knew how to give at that time. My father left me when I was uh, about one years old, two years old. And I have an older brother who is uh, four, five years older than me, and <clears throat> a younger brother, four years younger. So, you know, we grew up in a little family, and then I had a stepdad from about, I can't remember, I won't do numbers with you, but, you know, going back, taking me back now, mm. taking me back. So, you know, I had a stepdad uh, that come in, Roger, out, he was Lloyd's father. And, um, you know, we just, you know, we lived in a council estate from, we was in Downley originally, and then we moved to a place in High Wycombe called uh, Castlefield. And then it was really Castle where I grew up, Usual upbringing, hanging out with kids, playing around, pom pom, street games, fives. You know, pom-poms. you know, you know, pom pom. You heard of a game called pom pom? No, no, I've only heard. No, you thought that? Like, yeah, I was doing that. Yeah, pom-pom. yeah. No, I mean, you know, like just street games. You know, where you play like, uh, you know, it's just a manhunt was one of them. You know, okay. where you'd you'd go running, basically just to play. Okay, you know, got you. Fine, good, got good, you. good childhood. Got yeah, you. In my in my mind, yeah. We lived by a big woods. We used to go and do swings and. There's so much you don't remember when you're when you're growing up. Like, like here, you look back and you remember the pictures mm. that you remember, don't you? Or you remember like little specific moments yeah. that have always stuck in your head. And right? we often forget how vibrant that childhood growing up thing right. is. And it's a world of itself. It's a life in of itself, and then totally. adulthood suddenly totally. happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. And it is vibrant. And yeah. It's constant, and it's and it's present. Yeah. It's the key thing about childhood, it's mm. also wonderful, and I know we start to get indoctrinated and conditioned by our parents and by the mm. environment and so on, but still there's, there's, there's that presence of that non, con, there's no concern, there's mm. no concern really of time, there's no concern really of, of, of future mm. massively, other than you know, what you might be doing next week mm. if you're meeting up with your friends, yeah. but it's not really the, the, you know, my five year projection plan or Am I going to be, you know, and then you start to get into sort of teenagers, don't you? And it's like, what are you going to do when you're older? Yeah. You know, what profession are you going to be? You're going to be an electrician or a lawyer or yeah. you're going to go to university. And then that sort of shifts your, your awareness goes from not being too concerned about the future or time to actually, oh, what yeah. is the future and time? And did you, when did that stuff happen for you? Did you then... Um, what did I? What did I do? Yeah, did I, yeah. Um, what what happened, and when did all that stuff? Oh, when, presumably for lots of us, it's when school, we get sixteen or whatever. Yeah, well, probably before, probably before then. School, probably secondary school. Yeah, I'd say secondary school. And I went to. A, I was initially sent to a, 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 a secondary school, which was, in the label terms, a better secondary school than yeah. the one that was closer to our state. Yeah. But I didn't like it. Yeah. So I did two years there, and I wanted out. Because yeah. I thought it wasn't cool. Yeah. So I went back to another school, mm. which is closer to us now, where the cool friends were. Right. But I actually learned everything in the, the, two, the, the, the third and fourth year yeah. that I'd learned in the first and second year at the better school. Right. <laughs> okay. So I did the first and second year twice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but 
this time I was with people that I, was, that, you know, I liked and so yeah. on, in my twisted imagination at the time. But, you know, it is what it is. So, um, anyway, you know, moving along a bit faster. So, really, uh, sort of 15 started smoking. Um, everyone was smoking cigarettes. Right, okay. I hated cigarettes. Yeah. I hated the smell, still okay. do. Didn't like the smell. Yeah. Didn't like what cigarettes were. I just thought, you know, why do you want to put that in the mouth? Okay. But started to smoke marijuana. Okay. Because marijuana's a bit more cooler, you know. Okay. Bob Marley, you know, the whole thing. It's like, you know, it's cool. You know? Okay. Weed and, and so on. So, I started smoking uh, marijuana. And also, my elder brother did, and his group of friends. Right. I, was, I think maybe not having a father, I was very influenced by my elder brother okay. and their circle of friends. Okay. Looking back, that's how yeah. it unfolded. Yeah. So, um, started smoking marijuana and then started doing petty crime, shoplifting. And Was that something you needed to do or you wanted to do or you just found yourself doing? Or? Yeah, it's a good question. Again, no blame on anybody else, but hanging around with people. Because I don't know if you used to do this or anybody watching used to do this. The thing was you used to go downtown on a Saturday. So town was like, you go into town, bump into people from school, everyone's got their clean clothes on and the new trainers and then you know it's, 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 that's where you show up it's like yeah at school I've got a blazer and all that but the weekend I've got a gold chain and a watch and a necklace and a tie or not a tie like yeah. a shirt you know, and this is who I am okay. I'm the label so it's better showing, showing show off, off yeah. show your... ego it's ego yeah. projection it's, okay. it's, it's like you know you, you know that school is one person okay. but like the weekend I'm hanging out okay. with different people I'm hanging out with Rash and the older boys and you know so it's like very much you're always wanting to Humans are always just wanting to progress, aren't they? Yeah. To be better, to mm. be better themselves, to, mm. to, to do more things, to mm. expand. Mm. So I think, you know, very much at 15 I was, I was hanging around with slightly older guys. Yeah. And, and, you know, and also just getting myself into groups, yeah. really. I yeah. think, it's funny if somebody mentioned this the other day, we're, all, we're also we're always looking for a tribe. Mm. We're like little tribes, aren't we? Mm. So, anyway, I started hanging around with some people and the thing was, how could you make some money? Well, I could make some money by selling to the old guys. Teddy guys. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> so, I said, I guess they're leaving. The, the, the talk's so boring, everybody's leaving. <laughs> um, is that we're in these little tribes and then you just go along with the flow. Well, one of the ways to make money was that the older guys wanted links to the old drink. Do you remember links? Yeah, Why didn't they want that? It yeah. burns your armpit ears. And there was this big thing for Garfield Teddies. Garfield Teddies. Do you remember Garfield Teddies? Yeah, I do, but that's a bit surreal, isn't it? It's totally yeah. surreal. Yeah. Well, I used to steal them. Right. You know? How mad is that? Yeah. And the first time I got caught with shoplifting, I actually was caught with some, I think it was either a Mars bar, yeah. and it was a deodorant of some kind. I think it was Lynx. Yeah. What a nightmare. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I got caught with shoplifting, yeah. and the, 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 the in-store detective got me. Not as cool as the clothes that you're wearing outside. Yeah. It's, it's like, like, and also, you don't want to tell many people, did you? You got caught. Yeah, I was buying some links. I was smelling and hungry, you know? So, um, so that's sort of just, I mean, the reason why I'm sharing, I've never, never been shared with this part of the story with yeah. anybody, but it's, it's good to. It's interesting how you sort of then go on this, like, ripple effect mm. from those actions. Yeah. You're talking about choices yeah. and actions, so, how they so, so what was the ripple effect? Well, the ripple that? effect was from, you know, shoplifting to that then expanded to stealing bigger things, and then that led to being in that environment of stealing, so then it went, moved into stealing from sheds okay. in the estate. So it was stealing lawnmowers, yeah. bikes, yeah. things like that. You yeah. know, things outside of people's right. space, right. and then from there it moved into cars, yeah. and then from you know being with a group of people that used to go out and steal certain things, then it moved into houses. So then, when, you know, when you mean not stealing the houses, but yeah, the whole house, <laughs> brick by brick, <laughs> just take the whole off. People come out, it's like where my house got, oh man, he's taking it. Lo you know, loading up down there. So yeah. that's quite a, 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 a lot of people might say it's a slide from you know from lots of things that kids do, isn't it? Sometimes some kids will will steal and whatever to then getting involved in more serious serious theft and yeah. more serious kind of burglary and so on. So what what was going on and at, at this particular time for you? Or, oh, you mean like maybe emotionally or, or environmentally? Just, yeah, anything. I mean, I mean, I don't. You know, I, I think um, I, looking back on it. It's a good question. Is that probably? I think you're just locked into your own reality. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's no, you, 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 I don't remember having much awareness about anything other than my own survival, really, yeah. my own betterment. So yeah. it's like you know, stealing became like a habit. Then. Yeah. So it was like almost like a, it was an addiction. Yeah. And it was a buzz to it. Yeah. But also there was a status to it, and there was also an element of you know. Um, Okay, I can make money here quite easily, yeah. and if I've got money, I can do the things I 
things I want to do or have the things I want and also I get to hang out with certain people that I think are cool mm. even though you know in my, in my unconsciousness in my main delusion it's like you know you don't have the awareness at that point or you do what, you know whatever so I don't think you know I don't think it was like at home got really bad or you know it's like you know it just was what it was and, you know, or, and that's fascinating in itself isn't it you know so I mean, because sometimes th th that we as adults often think, oh, because this and this happened in our life, that's why this turned out yeah. that way, or well, yeah. that turned out yeah. that way. And I, I know just to kind of, not necessarily to say that we look at everything linearly, but I know that later on you move, things completely changed, and then you're in a completely different world of acting and yeah. doing commercials and totally. doing yeah. and doing films, which yeah. people might see as a completely different life style. And what happened and what... What happened well, in it between. drove that in between yeah. to get you to that point. Yes, it's, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because we all just go on this like trajectory of like life. Choices yeah. come up, you take them, and so on. You know, things are happening around you. But again, when you're in it, you don't see it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love the concepts of like you know when you know when you go into an old people's place. Mm. First time you walk in there, mm. you're like, whoa, mm. smells of like old people. Mm. Five minutes of being in there, you don't smell it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So so it's almost like when you're in the stink. Don't really smell it, you know. So at the time, you don't even really don't look at like oh, you don't look like oh, a year ago yeah. I was stealing that shops, so yeah. now I'm stealing that houses. Well, that's yeah. changed. That's a yeah. big shift, you know. You don't really you don't really look at it like that. Yeah. So you just go along with it as a slight progression, mm. and it was progression. Mm. If you, if, uh, the way I look at my whole life now, even to where I am right this moment mm. in this beautiful, blissful place, yeah. it's all oh, being progress. Yeah. It's all being progression. Yeah. You know, all the way up. Yeah. So 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 the, so the point is, is that. It was just progress. How can I progress? How can I better my situation? Right. Oh, stealing out of shops is a bit. That's a bit crap, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I steal out of shit. I steal out of shit. That's a bit crap, isn't it? Oh, I can make more money by stealing out of houses. Yeah. But also understanding that in that time, and with a collective of people mm. that create an energy, mm. that is also doing that. I see. So it's expanding. I see. So then to the point where really it went on up without staying in this area too long but we you know we could talk for hours and days and this because like you said most people put a bracket like oh because i started smoking weed yeah. then i started taking um ecstasy yeah. then i started taking cocaine yeah. and then i tried crack yeah. but i didn't go as far as heroin yeah but then people again say oh it always starts yeah. with weed yeah and, and it's almost like the body or the mind or something on this experience says i'm bored of that now yeah and it's, it's that not what enough and is that what and that what was and that's is it that that happened and was it kind of Scary in a way, this progression that was happening um, uh, um, for you. I would say it was exciting, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think that the fear was the excitement. Okay, you know, that's the great thing, isn't it? This, the, the fear is that you're in it, but it's scary, but there's an element of addiction in it and yeah. excitement in it all at once, yeah. even though it's a false sense of security yeah. within that excitement. Yeah. Because now, when I'm excited, it's like I'm, yeah. I'm in the essence of excitement in the full. And again, I know me and you are very much not labelling it, mm. and I don't want to say that was bad. Mm. I don't want to say it's neither good nor bad. Mm. But the point is, is that the we need to move beyond words here. But the essence of excitement and joy that I'm experiencing now yeah. is beyond the essence of excitement and joy I was experiencing mm. when burgling yeah. someone's house. And I do want to come onto that, you know, and, and, and talking about where it is that you are now. So, I'm, I, but but that then. Whatever happened between that shift, that, that, okay. that shift. Yeah, the shift. Okay. because so it I ended up in jail. Huge. Okay, so that was yeah, that yeah. was okay. you know, ended up in jail was a right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you, certain times you get a wake up call yeah. from some people, don't you? Yeah. You know, a friend tells you that something's got to change. Yeah. Or, you know, you see yourself in the mirror or something happens. Yeah. So, you, the real strange thing was happening to me because this happened between you got to remember this happened between fifteen and eighteen. Right. So it's three years yeah. of my life. Where most of the, okay. you could say, I, I don't want to call it dark side. Yeah. People will call it dark side. For the camera, you know, the darker aspects of life were happening between that age. And then from that point when I ended up in jail, where it accumulated, I was selling marijuana, huge amounts of marijuana, and then also um, smuggling, you know, smuggling drugs from, uh, you know, um, and, and burgling houses. And you know, and got quite deep. Yeah, that's quite full on. Quite, quite, quite deep yeah. in with a group of people. I mean, there was even one time in a car with somebody, yeah. having been the driver of them to do a drive-by shooting right. of somebody right. who I don't know, yeah. who didn't ever do anything horrible to me, but I'm in that environment, in that collective, who oh yeah, who the, oh who needs to drive the car? Oh, I drive the car. That sounds like fun. I mean, like you know, where was my head at? Mm. And thankfully, the guy never showed. Mm. But you know we were in a, we were in a place at you know early hours in the morning cleaning a cleaning a, 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 a 
gun mm. as to go out and embark on this journey at six, seven o'clock in the morning to do a drive-by shooting. Yeah. So, so at certain points was sort of, yeah. I was getting like little, yeah. like, you know, and, and then when I was stealing, there was also certain points where I was like, um, I don't like this. Mm. I'm not feeling this. Mm. But I couldn't, it was, and yeah. I'm not going to say I couldn't get out of it. I was in yeah. control, but I didn't choose to get out of it. Yeah. But I didn't get out of it. Yeah. So, so it was that it. irritation, but it was only when the... the right, the, so then the paranoia, well, it was a yeah. paranoia was building up, then the irritation, and then they're like, oh, I've got to get out of this. How am I going to get out of this? I feel like I'm in, in deep, I can't move. Mm. And then, you know what I used to do in the houses? I used to burgle people's houses. And I used to try to tidy up everything I touched and put it back right. Right. So that it didn't affect. Right. But, I'd already, would... but I'd already been in there and done it. Right, yeah. So there was and, a beginning of a more awareness of that yes, impact on others. Yeah, and then also, this was a key mm -hmm. process for me. I used to look at the photographs, say on a windowsill, you're in somebody's house, and there's photographs of it, their marriage photos or something, you know, it's real emotional stuff comes up. And I'm like, I'm putting the photos down. Because I'm like, what am I, you know? Yeah, it's because you didn't want it. Was it yeah, you didn't I, didn't want, I didn't want to see them. I didn't yeah. want to, you know, it's like, what am I doing it? Yeah. And it was like, I've got to get out. So actually getting caught, yeah. finally getting caught for accumulation of two or three things, ended me up in jail. Yeah. And luckily only for six months. Yeah. Um, I actually got a six month sentence and did yeah. four, about four months, yeah. which was going to be a 12 month sentence. And luckily, because I had a, a good solicitor, it didn't go to Crown Court. Because if it would have went to Crown Court, I could have been looking at you know two to three years. Because it was an accumulation of, of criminal activities. And, and, and what then? What then happened, and, and what did change? Because things did then markedly change, isn't it? To, to you know, as you say, to be on that kind of trajectory, or what we would assume, you know, is going to happen if somebody yeah. starts off here and ends up getting involved in this kind of stuff, and then to end up in in, in jail quite young, yeah. and then I don't know how many years later, because I don't know quite how many years like you in, in, in acting. Some so many people want to be in to have those kind of options. Yeah. What what yeah. happened, and what happened to you? And tell us just a little bit about that. Okay, so I said to you earlier, which was quite interesting, it come up today because I hadn't thought about it before fully like this, but I think that the point we're going to jail was that when I realised fully that you're on your own <laughs> in the terms of, you know, you have an experience, you're always on your own, like if you're stealing or if I'm here now or whatever, we're all pretty much on our own, mm. but also connected to mm. everything, but we're pretty much mm. on our own, we're having our own experience. Mm. And right now, you and I are having a different experience, mm. right? We're having our own separate experience yeah. within the collective yeah. of both of us. Yeah. So what was really interesting for me is when I was in jail, it's like, okay, I need to survive on my own now. And also, what woke up for me was just the choice of like, I knew people that were in and out of jail all the time. I knew people that were addicted to drugs, crack, cocaine, heroin, you name it. Yeah. You know? And then I also knew that, you know, I, this is, I don't like this. This is not a choice for me. Yeah. So I did, the, I did the time, but it was very much like, right, I need to make some changes. Yeah. Now the, the shift after that was the, the challenging part because yeah. what happened is that at that time I was still taking drugs, so I still um, I, I, I was what you call recreational drug taker. Okay. So I, was, I wasn't on them every day, yeah. but I was on them at the weekend for the yeah. party. Yeah. So it's like you know clubbing, yeah. take your ecstasy, smoke your reefer, and you yeah. know and, and get down and have, mm. have, have, a, have a good time, but a form of escapism mm. as well, but also have a really good time mm. at the time in my mind. Yeah. And it was some good times. Yeah. So when I come out of jail, I was still in the same circles, but I knew I needed to get out of there. Now I had some very supportive people, mm. still, even though they were in those circles, very supportive mm. people around me right. that were always there for me and also gave me money and, and looked after me in many respects. Mm. Um, and basically, whenever I maybe come out with something like I'm going to be an actor, because when mm. I come out, basically when I come out of jail, mm. I was sat at home one day and I was on my own mm. and I was smoking a joint. Yeah. I mean, this is my sort of key story I, that, that I remember clearly, but you know when you make a shift, there's loads of different things that lead to this, but this is my story to, just to tell you that this is the moment, you know, <laughs> because, it's, because it's quite funny as well. But I was watching Home and Away, which some of you guys might remember that Australian yeah. sh you know, show, yeah. soap show, whatever. Yeah. So I'm watching Home and Away and I'm sat on the sofa and I'm, I'm stunned. Yeah. And I'm watching and I'm like, man, this is terrible acting. This is really poor. And I'm like, I can do that. You know, it was one of those moments. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. And it was it really was. I mean, the irony was is that, funnily enough, yeah. I knew, I maybe knew I could do it. Yeah. But do you know what acting is? What? Acting is living a false life. Yeah. Acting is living a, no, mm. telling, uh, not telling a lie. Mm. It's, it's, it's imitating 
life. Mm -hmm. And I was imitating life all the time because, you know, it's like everybody is. We're just imitating life. Mm -hmm. And I also realised that even within the worlds that we live, they're just a play, they're just a film, they're just a constant thing. And let, if let's be honest, film and television are depicting that which reality is. Mm. We're telling stories. If me and you write mm. a film about our lives, mm. we're actually putting on the camera mm. our life. So it's like, I know I can play, I can do what they're doing. Go ahead. <coughs> so anyway, so yeah, that, that, that led into, I mean, at the time some stuff was happening with my mum, and my mum had to leave, and my younger brother had to leave, and it was a whole heap of negative energy happening around where we were living at the time. Yeah. And I actually did a silly choice, I made a silly choice that I would I would actually start being the sort of front man for um, a, a, a gang, or gang leader if you want to call it that, just for the, for the reference point, to start dealing quite huge amounts of marijuana. Mm. This was a bad choice. Yeah. Especially at a time where you've spotted something that you have the sense that you could yeah. could do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this was no no, sorry, I'm 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 back checking. This was mm. just before this right. was before jail. Right. So so when I come out of jail I come back to this environment right. and I'm like in this circle and I'm like, whoa, you know, something's gotta change. So I stopped basically I stopped uh, burglary and I still did some crimes, mm. you know, and mm. I was still smoking and so on. So it what I'm trying to get clear is I can't clearly say to anybody mm. watching this as transparent as uh, the only transparency I can be is it doesn't go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Back, forward, I, I'm yeah. out, then I'm back in. Yeah. Oh shit, why did I go and do that choice? Oh, oh why, why am I here again? Oh, you know what I mean? And it goes on yeah. and on and on. But what I know, clearly remember, is that I said, okay, I'm, an, I'm going to be an actor. So I talked to it for about six months. Mm. And everyone's like a bit like, yeah, whatever, yeah. So whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Go on, give it a go, you could do it. Some yeah. people did say, yeah, you could do it. So, you know, I ended up getting into the improvisation class. Yeah. So I'm going to speed forward a bit now, because yeah. I don't know how long we have yeah. to talk about. But yeah. did an improvisation class, managed yeah. to get into this improvisation class. At a similar time, I'd met this girl that she, uh, girlfriend at the time, and she gave me some stability in terms of like, a place to stay, mm. and also she used to drive me in places, because mm. at the time I lost my license for drink driving, yeah. and I also lost my license because I started driving when I was 16, mm. so by the time I got my license, I'd lost it. Right. So, and then, I, and then when I got my license back, I got caught for drink driving, mm. and then I lost it for a year. Right. So that was happening at the time of me trying to get out as well, so it's like, ah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was, all this stuff but it's all controlled by me, it's all my choices. Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting to this improvisational class, and the teacher again says, I think you've got something. I love your energy. Why don't you go to this school called uh, this, uh, Amateur Theatre in Ely, called Questus Theatre. An amazing theatre, it's, like, it's actually quite professional, although it has an amateur head to it, um, in terms of the space and the performances. So anyway, I went there, and I, I never auditioned for anything, yeah. and I actually, got in on a second audition, but prior to that, this, this is quite funny, I didn't know about auditions or reading stuff or monologues or anything like that, or dual dogs or anything, you know, I just thought, right, so it's like got to read two pieces of, from a play, yeah. so I'm like, I did do drama at school, yeah. so I understood drama, yeah. but I didn't know, I just didn't know the yeah. whole process, yeah. so I go to my old school teacher, wonderful woman in, in, uh, in the first school I was at, and I said, oh, I, just need, I need some monologues, you know, it's a good play. So she gives me two monologues, mm. Shakespeare monologue and another one. Mm. I didn't read the play. Mm. You're supposed to read the play before you do a monologue. Yeah. Otherwise, what character? So you just picked out the monologue. I just picked out yeah. the monologue, yeah. learned the monologue, went to the audition and read the monologue yeah. to this guy. Yeah. He must have thought, man, this yeah. guy, you know, who is this guy playing? I don't know, maybe yeah. he didn't. He obviously sees something. Mm. So I did that. And again, I had support, there's always support for you, you know what, more often than not, we were talking about this earlier, we think that there's no flow and there's no support because we think we're having it so bad and there's not. There's a whole heap of flow and support going on. Because mm. my teachers were there, people were there for me. When I decided when to decided be there for me, the, yeah, you know I, what I mean? You yeah, they showed up. So then tell us what happened because, you know, you you, you, you went, so you did this, the, 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 the drama course and you had these particular yeah. opportunities. Yeah. And then, you know, because I spent a bit of my time as a singer and performer and I've coached lots of people and I know lots of people in that particular realm and it's difficult and it's hard you know but you did you've done adverts you did a, 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 a big film in Europe and so on how did that stuff happen and how did you either make it happen or did it how it happened for you because lots of people often feel okay this is my circumstance and it's I can't get there this is something that happens to somebody else how did you maneuver yourself 
further forward from that? Was it force of will? Did you just know that you could do it? You'd done other stuff? Or what, mm, did, yeah. how, what, 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 <coughs> tell us just a, a bit about that. Okay, so I would say probably a, a driving force to succeed. A, a, a desire to better my, you know, like I said earlier, to, to, to better my experience. Yeah. And also, I have quite a determination that I don't really give up. Yeah. So I have like a driving determination and a perseverance. Yeah. But I also, there's something that just I've innately always had, and I just love the journey. Yeah. So for me, at the time, this is what happened. Yeah. I started my own business. Yeah. And I started my own business car valeting because I'd been car valeting before. Yeah. I needed to get out of it and have my own business because yeah. I wanted to go to this drama school. Yeah. The drama school was part time, but I needed a business. So I right. got a van. My yeah. friend, very good friend at the time from that same circle, mm. ended up giving me a van. I think it was like two, three, you know, one friend lent me £2,000. Mm. I got the van, I got the water, I got the jet wash. I was doing mobile car valeting. Mm. So I had that and then I got into Questus and I was just getting by by cleaning people's cars while still going to the thing and also doing a bit of hustling on the side. So yeah. I still doing a bit of hustling, you know, yeah. selling a bit here and there and so yeah. on. So then on top of that, what happened is I got through the two years and at the end at the end of the two years we went and did a play in Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Mm. And we went up there and, and what happened, you've got to share the story. Just before we got up there, we needed a van to take all the stuff up to Edinburgh Fringe. Mm. So what happened is we filled up the whole van, and yeah. when I pulled off, the whole wheel bearing went on the tire, just but just caved in. We didn't have a tire, right. so we couldn't use the van. Right. But my friend, who was there, an actress at the time, she had an AA card, mm. which if you've already started your journey mm. from where you live mm. to where you're going, they will take you all the way. Okay. So we we just said that we'd come from down Brighton, okay. we got to Ealing, and we were going to Scotland. So they took us all the way to Scotland with the van on the back of the AA van. We got the whole stuff to the show to Scotland. So then I park up the van in Scotland. I think, what, I need to get it fixed. Mm. So I get the van fixed, go and park it up, and the van gets stolen. The whole van gets oh, stolen, no. right? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's quite right. ironic. It's quite ironic. It's quite but, ironic. So I walk back to the place, and I'm like, everyone's like, oh, you know, you got the van, we're going to load up now. And I'm like, no, there's no van. And like, and they used to call me terrorists. So they're like, terrorized, there's no van. And I'm like, no, there's no van. But I'll have a Jet Daniels and Coke. So they're like, what do you mean you're going to have, have a Jack Daniels Coke? So I drink the Jack Daniels and Coke. And they think that I'm lying mm. because I'm so calm about it. But you have to understand, when you've stolen a lot of things in life, if something's stolen from you, mm. you can't react mm. and get angry about being mm. stolen from. Yeah. So I was just like, well, you know, the van's gone. It's a piece of metal. Who cares about the van? The van's yeah. gone. It's not there. Like, what do you want me to do? Run around Scotland and go, ah, where's my van? Yeah. What's the point? It's gone. Mm. Yeah? So from that point, the van had gone, we got back to England, blah, blah, blah. And at that point I went on a journey really and I, I, I said to myself, I'll get an agent, I will get jobs, I will be an actor. Blah, blah, blah. So I just ploughed out now. I've had six agents, I've been in the industry 10 years, I've done some work with um, uh, David Jason from Only Fools and Horses, I've been in some, um, uh, film's really my passion, so mm. I've been in some high production films, mm. I've done some commercials, some bit parts in other films, I've produced my own short films and I've produced my own feature films. Yeah. So, you know, for me it was very much like this is what I enjoy doing. But also the whole time is I'm not saying I've made loads and loads of money out of that mm. rash, because mm -hmm. I haven't. Yeah. But it doesn't matter, the richness of that experience has been so, it's mm. the creative buzz mm -hmm. and the inspiration, the people that I've met. Yeah. And there's been just to throw one thing in there, one thing that really helped me yeah. ten years ago is that I got into, a friend of mine put me into a guy called Jeff Thompson, mm -hmm. and if, one of the first books I read of his was The Art of Positive Thinking. Mm -hmm. So what I've also done for that process, I don't want this to sound flippant to the guys listening mm -hmm. on this show, mm -hmm. is that I've reprogrammed constantly, and still now, mm -hmm. still with the stuff we're talking about, mm -hmm. I've reprogrammed my subconscious programming and I'm still doing it. And even though at subtle times, even now, there's still essence of lack, lack mentality and so on, I'm constantly bringing it into awareness and reprogramming the subconscious, because the subconscious is how we're active. Yeah. Right, yeah. So there was, at the same time as this um, betterment of yourself, this time through uh, this new career that you realised that you could do in terms of the acting and moving that forward within films, producing your own films and all sorts of other kind of stuff, there's also at the same time this self-development journey that's kind of yes, going on. Yes, hugely, and, and alongside, and thank alongside. you to my mum as well, because she's an amazing, she's an amazing uh, writer, and she's a, she, she reads books, yeah. and she really, you know, 
her and a few other people. Like my first ever book mm. was Thinking Grow Rich. <laughs> yeah, which is supposed to be a real classic. Right, a classic yeah. book, isn't it? Yeah? yeah, by Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Um, but again, it's not just about rich, as in rich money. Most mm. people get that book and go, "Oh, I'm going to be rich financially." It's beyond the financial. It doesn't mean you won't be rich financially. You will. But this is about the, the message of that book is the the, the the abundance that you can create within mm. yourself. And also, one of the most beautiful things. And if you think about my whole journey, even to where we are now, mm. is the ability to be a co-creator and alchemist of energy. Right. Because that's all we're doing. Well, and that's that brings us nicely to what it is that you are doing now. I mean, um, obviously, I didn't know any of that backstory when we when we first met. And um. Uh, um but the thing that when we did meet, we were meeting at a, a, a circle which um, draws quite a lot of people who are spiritual filmmakers or people who could sp uh, holistic, holistic, yeah. holistic. This is where spirituals, yeah. you know, filmmakers and creatives and so on. Tell me a little bit about the work that it is that you do now and the journey that yeah. is you've been on re recently, because this is all about. This is really about, I guess, an awakening to life. Yeah. You could um, say that. I, 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 I mean, I've had many awakenings the whole way. Right. You could say. Because yeah. even like coming out of jail was like, I had an awakening. I see. You know? It's like, whoa, I see. things need to change. So, so, so I don't like, people do want to go yeah. there. Want to go, not you, but most people go, oh, I've had this awakening yes. or this epiphany, or it's like, it's like, it's all spiritual now. Now. Yeah. It hasn't been spiritual now, but now it's here, yeah. 34 years in, now I'm spiritual. It's like, no, 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 no. no. Not from my perspective. It's like this is a whole unfolding journey of awareness, I see. you could say. I like that. You see what I mean? Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm a little bit aware, I'm a little bit aware, I'm a little bit more aware, I'm a little bit more aware. Now, most some people, their, their awareness stops yeah. and they don't want to expand it anymore. Yeah. They don't want to read. They don't want to yeah. look at maps of the world. They don't want to look at other people's ideas. Yeah. They don't want to hear different philosophies. They don't want to They don't want to expand right. their mind to And that. that's interesting because then in that acting world, you know, yes. okay, there you are, you one of your films, now you're tra traveling around the world filming at the, the what's it, AO? Um, yeah, I did AO, The Last of the Undertale. Yeah. I've got to give you a copy. Yeah. I've got to give you a copy of both films. Well, oh, that's great. <laughs> Excellent. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Um, so, so, so when you're doing that kind of stuff, lots of stuff can kick in thinking, yeah, now, now I have made it. I don't yeah. need to make myself more aware of any other stuff. But for lots of people, it's not necessarily going to be about no. a spiritual or a, a finding self journey. Yeah. So what? Well, you, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I, you, yeah. I love your question. It's like being on the sofa. <laughs> it's like being on the yeah, sofa. Yeah, but you did that to me on the sofa yeah, as well. Yeah. I'm going to question you, you one do. day. Yeah, yeah I'm um, looking to it. So, mad experience. Yeah. Ten years wanting to be an actor. Yeah. And was being an actor, but ten years wanting to make it successful. Yeah. Wanting to be like Brad Pitt, Johnny Depp. You yeah. know, still love those guys. Yeah. Still love making films. Still want to make films that make yeah. a difference. No mm. problem. Still love acting. Mm. But we're acting right now. This is all, this, we're all in a game, a, a life, a, a film, as yeah. it were, you know. And, and then I had a realisation, 10 years in, I just got this big film, big film job, nine months shooting, lead character, mm. I'd done a lead, uh, lead production in a film prior to this and mm. I had this like lead role, mm. huge role, mm. amazing film mm. about the origin of our species. Yeah. I've seen this. I, yeah, I was, yeah, playing, yeah. I was playing this Neanderthal, it was like shot over uh, nine months, I was in the depths of caves, peaks of mountains, you know, being looked after, I mean it was just beautiful, mm. a wonderful experience. Mm. In fact, it's like I often associated to imagine if he was in Lord of the Rings mm. or something along those lines it's one of those epic adventures of a film mm. where you're like I'm not as an actor probably going to get an experience like this again mm. you know a gift mm. that was given to me amazing mm. and the whole team and everything it was just it was epic mm. it was epic and I got it and it, you know, highly paid as well, everything's cool, everything's great. Mm. And I'm thinking, this is actually the beginning. Mm. This is the beginning. Yeah. This is like, now I've got this, yeah. not only have I got the show reel, yeah. this is the beginning. Yeah, that's what we tend to think. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, guess yeah. what? Boom. Awareness expands. And I, at that point I have this sort of expansive awareness. To, On set? A dream no, filming? No, no. Do, sort of just before, yeah. before I even went away to the film, yeah. of like, this acting, just being an actor, wanting to be an actor, and oh no, this isn't it. There's something that I'm connected to that's beyond the essence of just wanting to make a film. There's something that I'm connected to on, and having an effect on, and having a, a connection to, that is so beneath, and, and is, in the, is the essence of the creation of all that is, and it's like, wow, and then, this realization of wanting to be an actor, and for years I wanted to see myself on billboards. That was my thing. If I ever get on billboards, that's the one. So, 
going through this film, and at the time I'm going through this film, I need to be big. Mm. I need to be much musclier mm. for this character. Mm. And I turned vegetarian mm. because I'd had all this awareness about mm. the, the animals, the, the, the pain, the suffering. I'd been watching a load of documentaries about society, about um, um, politics, about consumerism, about, about everything. And my whole society and how I thought life was, it just gone mm. crumbled. Mm. And I'm there being an actor, and I'm like, I'm on this film to stardom, and I'm like, whoa, what is this? I want to pause you there. Please. And we're going to come back because I'm going to pause it there yes. and we'll come back. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs>